Hello and welcome to this 2C32 production on signing and reporting a heteronuclear NMR spectrum. In the ammonia adduct of bispentafluorophenyl borane, you have two uh, C6F5 groups. On those two C6F5 groups, there are three different fluorine environments. We have the orthofluorines, the two and six position, being one of those environments. The meta 3,5 fluorines being a second environment, and the parafluorine 4 being a third chemical environment. So we are going to have three resonances in the 19F NMR. Now, 19F NMR is not proton NMR, uh, but that shouldn't throw you because 19F NMR uh, has, or 19F nucleus, has a nuclear spin of a half, which is the same as a proton. So what you find is that although the chemical shift range, the signals we're looking at here are occurring between minus 130 and minus 170 or so ppm, although that chemical shift range is very different to the one familiar from proton NMR, the coupling patterns that we see are very similar and predictable in the same way as proton NMR. So we see three signals in this fluorine NMR, but it's such that we need to really zoom in on each of those signals to see what is going on. So if we zoom in on the orthofluorine resonance, it appears as a doublet. Of course it appears as a doublet because it's split by the adjacent metafluorine. In the case, this case of this spectrum, the spectrum is annotated at the top here with the peaks picked out in ppm, in the chemical shift range. So the middle of, these, of this doublet, which will come of course at minus 135.8 ppm, is the chemical shift of the doublet itself. Now in order to work out what the coupling constant of that doublet is, we need to do a conversion. And the way that we convert these is by taking the uh, difference in chemical shift, which of course is 0 0.07 ppm, and multiplying that by the frequency at which the spectrum was recorded. And in this case, that is available on the next slide. So if we look down here, we can see that the frequency of which the spectrum was recorded is 282.4 hertz. So the way that we need to do the calculation is to multiply, you know, since the value is in megahertz and since it's a chemical shift scale is in parts per million, we simply need to multiply the chemical shift difference 0 0.07 by the frequency in megahertz, 282, and that gives us the value of 20 hertz. So the coupling constant for that doublet is 20 hertz. And since we are carrying relatively few significant figures in the difference between the chemical shift signals, it is not reasonable to quote that coupling constant to any more than, say, two significant figures, 20 hertz. Now, if we move on and look at the reds, next resonance, that is that of the parafluorine. And the parafluorine appears as a triplet. Why does it appear as a tri triplet? Well, of course, it appears as a triplet because it's split by the two equivalent metaprotons, the same rule that you'd expect to see in proton NMR spectra. Now, in this case, the middle resonance is actually the chemical shift of this triplet, minus 158.4 hertz in here. And the coupling constant is the separation between two of these peaks times 282.4, which again, to two significant figures, comes out as being 20 hertz. Finally, if we look at the metafluorine resonance, now this metafluorine resonance is a very complex splitting pattern indeed. It is not sensible or necessary to try to break that down into individual couplings. Clearly there's going to be coupling of the metafluorine to the orthofluorine, of the metafluorine to the parafluorine, but there also seems to be some longer range coupling giving a very complex multiplet. When you see a pattern like that, you simply refer to it as a multiplet. And the chemical shift of the multiplet is the middle of that multiplet. So here we would need a value of minus 164.24 ppm as being the chemical shift of the metafluorine. 
Now, we need to present this data in the standard format. Now, the standard format that is recommended for 2C32 is that of the Royal Society of Chemistry Journal Dalton Transactions. Now, this is also the same, same format that the Royal Society of Chemistry Organic Chemistry Journals use, and so this information is equally reasonable for 2C11, um, M30Y, and finally when your final year documenting your reports as well. So what we do is we first of all specify that we're going to be talking about the chemical shift which of course is given the symbol delta. The subscript refers to the nucleus so we're talking about the chemical shift of the fluorine and the units are ppm. And then we give the key parameters. So the key parameters are the frequency which as we discussed earlier is 282.4 hertz. The chemical NMR solvent that we're using, deuterated benzene in this system. And then it's customary to read the spectrum from left to right. So we start with the highest values of chemical shift and read across, eventually giving the lowest values of chemical shift. So if we take the first of these signals, of course that's at minus 135.8. If we look at the intensity in these systems, now I would suggest that you can work out what the intensity in this system should be, but if you look at this spectrum carefully in the slides that we previously showed, there is an intensity of 4 to 2 to 4 here. So we have four fluorines, it's a doublet, the coupling constant uh, expressed in J, which is italicized, subscript FF because it's a coupling between two fluorine atoms, is 20 hertz and then we have the assignment so it's assigned to F2 and F6. Then we have a comma separating it from the next one at minus 158.4 that's intensity 2 fluorines it's a triplet the coupling constant is 20 hertz and that's due to F4 and finally we have a resonance at minus 164.2 which is 4 fluorines it's a multiplet and it's assigned to F3 and F5, the meta fluorines.